So the American front porch actually is an import from Africa. When the slaves came over and had to build their own houses, they built them with a area out in front that was where they gathered to shell peas and cut the kids' hair and things like that. And uh, they also had to, had to go to church and learn the hymns. But um, on that front porch, people started editing and changing, and songs changed too. And here's one that's uh, part from the church and part not quite. I got shoes, you, you got, got shoes, all God's, God's children got, got shoes. When I get to heaven, gonna put, put on, on my, my shoes. shoes, gonna walk all over God's heaven. Heaven, heaven. 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 Everybody talking about heaven ain't going there. Heaven, heaven, heaven. 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 I got a robe, you, you got, got a robe, robe. All, all God's, God's children, children got a robe. When I get to heaven, gonna put, put on, on my robe. robe, gonna shout all over God's heaven. Heaven, heaven. 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 When you. <laughs> Yeah, everybody talking about heaven ain't going there, heaven, heaven. And so it went. Times changed. People stayed out on that front porch singing all, all sorts and manners of things. And we came along to a time when songs came from other places. came from other places and they gathered on the front porch and they sang this song was a poem in a Harper's Magazine in 1879 came somehow to Galena, Missouri May Kennedy McCord put a tune to it in 1911 we found it in her archives at MSU in 1990 or so it's called Palace Grand Be my 
nothing to you Though you are the world to me More stories about the front porch can be found nearly anywhere if you want to look. It's an interesting phenomenon. Everybody was outside until they could turn on the air and go inside. And everybody had to go out from the wood stove and the cook stove and all the heat in there in the summertime until they could go in and watch television, turn them, turn on the air. A fellow said that he and his mother used to sit outside and look at the stars and, and she would ask him to make a wish and he'd tell her, he'd ask her, ask the universe that just let them just fly. Could they just fly? He said, I don't think she's seen the stars since she got the satellite dish. <laughs> Different world.
This is Isaiah Clell Estes. And how old are you, baby? Three. Are you three? He has an original, and it's called the Mommy Song. Ready? Go. Hey. Mommy. 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 This <laughs> again. Oh, I love you, baby boy. No, my girl. Good job. Can you blow a kiss? Go mwah. Mm. Oh. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> this song was originally a poem by Robert Loveman in 1901, um, sometime around the early 20th century anyway. I'm not exactly sure on the date, but I thought uh, it needed to be turned into a song. He wrote two verses, so I added a third verse and I set it to music, and I did that just recently, a couple months back. It was for a Mother's Day present for my grandma because she used to recite the poem when she was a little girl in school. So I thought she would like to have the poem turned into a song. And it's called April Rain. And it's one of the radiest Aprils we've had in a long time. So I thought it was fitting to do this song for today. This next one is a song I wrote last April in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. And it's based loosely off of Ecclesiastes chapter three. It's called, This Too Shall Pass. You can't have good times without bad. You can't have happy without sad. We've fallen on hard times. Right now, there's melancholy the whole world round. But I hear a voice soft and clear as I look. Together, you and I, so we can. 
Ozark folk songs used to be a common language and everybody could join in and sing on a song like Buffalo Gals or Skip to My Lou or this one right here which is currently about 150 years old. My grandfather's clock was too tall for the shelf so it stood 90 years on the floor. It was taller by half than the old man himself, though it weighed not a penny weight more. It was bought on the morn of the day that he was born, and was always his treasure and pride. But it stopped short, never to go again, when the old man without slumbering tick tock tick tock it's life seconds numbering tick tock tick tock it stopped short never to go again when the old man died in watching its pendulum swing to and fro many hours he had spent while a boy and in childhood and manhood that clock seemed to know and to share both his grief and his joy for it struck 24 when he entered at the door with a blooming and beautiful bride but it stopped short Never to go again when the old man died. Ninety years without slumbering, tick tock, tick tock, it's life seconds numbering, tick tock, tick tock, it stopped short. Never to go again when the old My grandfather said that of those he could hire, not a servant so faithful he bowed. For it wasted no time and had but one desire at the close of each week to be wound. For it had in its place not a frown upon its face, and its hands never hung by it. Short, never to go again when the old man died. Ninety years without slumbering, tick tock, tick tock, it's life seconds slumbering, tick tock, tick tock, it stopped. Short, never to go again.
like to do a ballad. They weren't quite as well known as in not sing-along songs, but they were good storytelling songs to sing while you were snapping the beans or milking the cows or working with your hands when your mind wasn't so busy. This one is called The Lightning Express. The Lightning Express from the depot so grand had just started out on its way. Most all of the passengers who were on board seemed to be happy and gay. Except a little boy on a seat by himself who was reading a letter he had. It was plain to be seen by the tears in his eyes the contents had made him sad the stern old conductor who started to take a ticket from everyone there was reaching beside of the boy and then gruffly demanded his fare I haven't ticket the boy replied but I'll pay you back someday I'll put you off at the next station then but he stopped when he heard the boy say please Mr. Conductor don't put me off of your train for the very best friend that I have in this world is waiting for me in pain. Expecting to die any moment and may not live through the day. I want to kiss mother goodbye, sir, before God takes her away. Mother was ailing before I left home in need of a doctor's good care. I came to the city employment to seek, but I did not find any work there. A letter from sister this morning arrived. Come home, mother's dying did say. to ride, but I haven't any money to pay. A little girl sitting close by then exclaimed, to put the boy off is a shame. And taking his hat, a collection she made, and soon paid his fare on the train. I'm obliged to you, miss, for your kindness to me. You're welcome, said she, never fear. And every time that conductor passed by, these words would ring in his ears. Please, Mr. Conductor, don't put me off of your train. The very best friend that I have in this world is waiting for me in pain, expecting to die any moment and may not live through the day. I want to kiss mother goodbye, sir, before God takes her. Goodbye, sir, before God takes her away. <laughs>
Sky's the shade, faded slate. Time to close the town for the day. Time to pile sandbags high against the dike, against the wall, against the strike of the looming squall. Crowds dissolve, giving way. Danger doubles by the day. Ohio rivers passed the record on the Carroll gauge, and now the core has choices great on the Mississippi, which to risk and which to save. Skies aglow, an eerie blast. Birds point levees falling fast. Birds point floodways sinking down beneath the dross, beneath the grain, beneath crop losses and bin hooks Been cows and turned to skew, been hooks inundated through, been hooked pines while corn rebounds, coffers stretched as people strong as resurrection delayed so long. Power, Lord, and peace be stole, hold back the water still. Brandon Wood 
to granite city steel Though the so-called civilization came at a cost Of some fishing, foraging, farming skills that were lost Novel knowledge proved opportune to Ozark is tossed by tempests of industry into mills of different domains, though similar strange. Streets confined and crowded from timber twined open range. Four new buildings framed in new frames, entailing a change of waters from calm, clear to mighty, muddy, grand in wood to granite city steel. Choices await, options are few, binding our fate to frontiers still just out of view, though not so far in real distance from Grand in Wood to Granite City Steel. They slog molten metal by night, slip restless by day. Stood on steel, gray flat cement floors, not red flinty clay. Feeling lost, yet finding somehow they're making their way through habits of industry. Children brought Armenian teammates home to break bread. Daughters brought Bulgarian bridegrooms home to be wed. Both bold independence and plan conformity. To hide dry from damp, low lying bluff top tracks from bottoms by the track. Grandchildren float, weak in canoes, down streams remote, barely noticing the few clues. They're floating through their own homeland from granite city steel to grand and wood. Choices await, options abound, freeing our fate. Yet we strain to find solid ground on which to build our foundations for furtive fears our comforts can't conceal. From grand in wood to granite city steel. Mountains, I hear you calling. With you is 
where I long to be. Thank you. 
Cutting these clippers, messing up the floor. Been cutting the boys there since spring of '54. Not anymore. Sure was no big dream, tiny little store. But it kept them fed and kept them honest to the core. Not anymore. On the sidewalk wearing pretty thin Just wasting away Waiting for folks to come back in Saying where you been How you been my friend Lost his business from the box came in he didn't close her down just took it on the chin now where you been shopping and groceries and banking head within even got a little hair place with two chairs like twins now where you been ghost on the sidewalk wearing Wasting away, waiting for folks to come back in. Saying where you been, how you been, my friend. Cloud and his clip. Open every day till two, yeah. Not that it matters, cause they all just pass right through. Now what'd you do? Square's nearly empty, it's a looking awful blue, yeah. Banged up and burnt up, it's feeling kinda used. Now what'd you do? Ghost on the sidewalk, away. Wasting away, waiting for folks to come back in. Saying where you been, how you been, my friend. Cloud and his clippers sweeping up the floor. There ain't been much hair there for 20 years or more.
Was chicken proof as hardly crowed one hour too soon. She sent her love away before it had come day, and he traveled by the light of the moon, moon, moon. And he traveled by the light of the moon. She saddled up her milk white steed, and also her dapple gray. Dark wilderness at the end of the long summer's day, day, day. At the end of the long summer's day, my own true love, my sweet turtle love. When shall I see you again? When the stars and the moon are in the yonder green, and the sky shall shed no more rain. I shall shed no more rain
I am a wraith A rambling boy There's many a city Was a man in trouble's head Bound to the city and he was not free Stayed awake all through the night Living in harm where he lost his sight Stay away from this foul world To the moon this ground is earth All this laws all this dark for this gentleman's love
Working all night long, he'd sleep with the birds Long down the morning and he'd say these words Stay away from this wild world To the moon, this ground is hers All is lost on this dark soul For this trouble man is born
the dress that you wear so fine. I got my shoes from a railroad and man, and my dress from a driver in the mine. Hop high, hop high, hop high, my Lulu gal. Hop high, hop high, hop high, my Lulu gal. I'll pawn you my watch and I'll pawn you my chain I'll pawn you my gold wedding ring To pay the fine of my sweet Lulu gal I'll pawn you my wagon and my team Hello, my name's Kevin Smith. I was, uh, I think I was born in the wrong century. Uh, when I was uh, a young boy, I, I grew up watching black and white TV. We had three channels and I would, I would uh, ride my bicycle home in a hurry so I could get inside to watch Walt Disney, to watch Daniel Boone and Davy Crockett, and to watch uh, all the shows that were like that. And it, uh, it sparked an interest in me, and that's what I wanted to play. I tried to learn how to flint nap, and I make Native American pottery, and I do, I like to draw with pen and ink, the old type pens where you dip it in the ink, and you shake the ink off. 
then you draw, and then if you make a mistake, you gotta learn how to hide it. And I got recruited kind of by accident to be a Boy Scout leader in 1983, and uh, then I became a, an adult leader trainer, and I was in adult leader training, and I, I met a man by the name of Bud Cooley who changed my life because he shot muzzle loaders, and so I was shooting my, my cheap reproduction gun that didn't really have a whole lot of characteristics of a modern, I mean of an antique firearm, and I wanted one that, that looked like some of the guys that I looked up to in the muzzle loading club. I wanted a gun like them, but I couldn't afford to buy one. I was over there working on, a, on a, another cheap flintlock, and Leonard Newby, who worked for the conservation department, was driving by, and he just cruised in there and saw me working on a gun. He said, I got a barrel I'll sell you, and I'll help you build this gun. And, and uh, he said, it's going to be pretty expensive. You know, you're going to have to, the barrel will be, you know, $80, and then you're going to have to buy an $85 lock, and then you're going to have to buy an $80 piece of wood, and, and you're going to have to buy triggers and, and all the rest of the parts for the gun. And Bud said, I'll help you build it. And he said, we'll just buy the parts a little bit over time. And I got that gun built, and, and this is an example of, or this is the gun. This is the first first muzzle loader, loader I ever built. It's a uh, an American Jaeger, so it's a gun from about 1750 that would have been made from old German parts and put together in an American style. So it's got a little bit longer barrel than the, than the Jaeger, but still a large caliber like the Jaegers. This is a 62 caliber, so it's a 20 gauge rifle. And it's my deer hunting gun, and it's been to Canada bear hunting. Kathleen Morsey got us a folk arts Grant and Leonard was my, uh, what would I call him? Anyway, he was my boss, he was my sensei. We, uh, he helped me build the muzzle loader. He coached me through it and we met in Mountain View and, and, and there got to be more people involved. And we, it grew into a little gun building club and we'd have sometimes four people over there building guns and uh, all, all flint locks. And, and then it, and getting into rendezvousing grew for that. Today I, I was, I'm teaching a, uh, a guy how to blacksmith a knife. I haven't done a real good job of it, but uh, he chose a really hard material to work with. But, you know, I wanted to have everything handmade, and then, but I wanted to make it myself. So I've, you know, I've sewn up my coats, and I've sewed up pants, and, and, and uh, I've made knives, and I make the sheaths, and I've made uh, an axe, and, and then you make your powder horns, and 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 all the everything that you can think of. You try to build yourself on my on my bucket list to build. I want to build my own frying pan. I want to pound out a, a skillet, and uh, you know, I've made my own cooking utensils, and my own spoons, and forks, and spatulas, and. and uh, and it, it's just it's just more fun when you go out and you, you get to do do what you enjoy and do it with things that you've built yourself. It's the apprenticeship part of it is to, and I'm, I'm trying to continue that, kind of in memory of Leonard Newby. Cancer took him from us and uh, I lost my gun building coat. I'm gonna get teary eyed talking about him. <clears throat> uh, to do demonstrations like I'm doing here at the music festival where I lay out my guns and, and actually worked on a gun a little bit today uh, and uh, it's kind of hard to do in front of the public but you know we've got a forge going outside and I've got a gun and a vice and, and I'm continuing my apprenticeship with Leonard. I'm in the process of putting together a gun shop at the house and I'm putting in extra benches because it becomes a social thing. It's not just a you know, one person building a gun, I'm gonna recruit other people. And you know, it may be more coffee drinking than it is gun building, but we'll have a we'll have a social time out in the garage and we'll build on some guns and we'll have a forge out there and we'll blacksmith some and we'll drink coffee and and talk about the our buddies that have gone to the rendezvous in the sky.
Thank you, dancers. Yes, you got it.